Hello everyone, welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.10 this time. I've forgotten the element of surprise here as to what I am testing. As you can see, I intend to try to launch Max on a Proton, well, the Proton first stage, and then everything up here is a normal Max tank. Well, it's not a normal Max tank. The normal Max tank looks like this. Uh, it's much wider and therefore also shorter, even though it's got this shape. But yeah, it has the same propellant load as the point. Uh, not exactly the same. We might have some residuals, but it shouldn't be too far off. But yes, this is the idea. And the goal, obviously, is to avoid having to launch Max on an AN-225, which even if I get that right, is tedious. And also doesn't really offer a whole lot of payload capacity for Max. It leaves it with a payload capacity of about 7 tons. So, I decided to do this. It looks a little bit askew. <laughs> um, uh, okay, well, I'm just gonna... It's not easy to tell <laughs> where whether the angle is bad or not. Uh, it just felt a little bit bad there. Uh, I think maybe... I don't know. It probably depends on my camera angle, too. So, we're gonna find out the hard way, which is by testing it. And... Well, I guess the hard way would be to work it out by hand with vectors and everything, but... Okay, the more entertaining way, by testing it. And we are testing it with a greater payload than Max would normally carry. Uh, it is... It, it doesn't really fit in the cargo bay, but... Rerenik made this orbital tug, the Perome orbital tug. It's 12.3 tons. Normally, Max, with the AN-225 launch, would only be able to carry 7 tons. So, this is a fair bit more and it really barely fits in there. It doesn't really fit in there. It's uh, clipping into the cargo bay walls. At least it isn't clipping into the bottom. And we'll see whether it explodes when we try and release it. So that is what we're trying to carry, and let's see how this works. So no, I have not tried to get it to orbit yet. This has not gotten to orbit. We are going to find out how it works. <laughs> uh, throttle up, SAS on, and ignition. We are at Baikonur. And launch. Uh, we'll go up a little bit. It seems that it can handle it. Delta V is all weird because we're hot staging the RD-704s. And of course, they have two modes. The kerosene, hydrogen, oxygen mode. And the hydrogen and oxygen mode. So, I, I can't know ahead of time whether this is gonna have enough delta V or not because that's all too complicated I'm definitely sticking to the control authorities and we want to make sure we don't use more than half of the yaw in this case yaw is proxy for pitch because we are rolled that way we are past the speed of sound as far as dynamic pressure, we should be through the worst of it. Okay, I don't need that. I need to focus on the orbital parameters and the time to apoapsis. And let's see if decoupling works. Okay, ignition. And separation. Looks good to me. Now, let's monitor the kerosene usage, so that I know when to switch modes. You can see, in this mode, we still have just barely above a thrust weight ratio of 1, so... But we probably don't need this much pitch. Let's go to orbit velocity. One interesting goal might be to make the first stage somewhat reusable. I mean, of course, uh, the only thing not reusable here now is the external tank, but then the first stage is also not reusable. If we could give it some parachutes, landing legs, and maybe an inflatable heat shield, you know, it's stubby enough, it could probably be alright. Okay, getting ready to switch modes. Mode switch. A little bit dodgy there, but okay. We 
We do have all our... Oh, no, we don't. Oh, shoot, it used this kerosene again. Ah, uh, well, we have some of our OMS fuel, not all of it. So it looks like we're going to have enough margin here that we could put some parachutes, landing legs and such on the first stage. And this would still all work out. And this is sure easier than trying to launch it with an AN-225. Okay, and that's orbit. Alright, so we have our orbit with some margin to spare. Uh, though, we did use the kerosene from the max, so we need to... And for some reason I can't pump this kerosene back over here, I don't understand why. But, uh, alright, let's separate off. No, I don't want to focus on that. We, had fo we have a controller on that just to make sure that we can do things properly. Um, oh, this has no kerosene, so it can't move away. Okay, and of course it had to use kerosene and HTP RCS, so it can't use the same RCS as the... Whoa, this is all mixed up now. Okay, um, as the tug inside. But at least that means that the tug inside still has its fuel. Let me make sure that this can separate. So, decouple. Well, it separates a little bit violently because it's clipped into the side a little bit. It was, it, I mean, uh, it was not intended to be carried by Max. Uh, so, okay. Um, down engine, activate engine. It has RCS, right? Maybe, oh, maybe it has a separate RCS part. Oh, I bet Raider Nick did that. I didn't put the separate separate RCS part. Hopefully it doesn't stick out too much. But yeah, I'll have to put the separate RCS part to test it. Okay, so we have a few things to test. I want to try and put parachute and maybe a heat shield on the first stage and landing legs. Um, and then also make sure that we have the fuel priority set in max and then add the rest of the stuff to this. Probably need solar panels too. Not sure. But I mean, it's got... Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. All right, let me make some fixes. Okay, so this time I have put the RCS ports and solar panels on the payload. Unfortunately, the RCS ports do sort of stick out, as you can see uh, from, from here. Yeah, and not at the bottom, thankfully, but uh, at the top, yeah. So that's not wonderful, but we'll deal with it for now. Uh, just because I don't want to try and figure out another payload right now. And it'll be interesting to see how it does. Uh, so we have the fuel priority set properly. And also, I didn't mean to throttle up, but we'll eventually throttle up, so why not? Uh, and we have recoverability on the first stage, theoretically. We are going to test that first, and then test whether Max can get into orbit, given all the rest of it. Uh, so inside here, we have a heat shield, inflatable heat shield. Uh, there it is. And we have some RCS tanks and also a controller. And we have these RCS ports and these Falcon landing legs because, well, we know that those work, right? Interesting sound they come with. Okay, and so obviously we want to land engine side up, which isn't obvious, but I mean, uh, it isn't obviously going to work, but we have the parachutes on this side. And of course, it's land all the way as far as downrange is concerned. So let's find out. Let's just find out. Throttle up, SAS on. So again, we're gonna follow the first stage this time. Ignition. And launch. We're somewhat heavier this time. I didn't check last time whether we had an imbalance in the propellants. Okay, ignition. And staging. Ooh, a little bit, uh, almost a clearance problem. Okay, we're following this for now. And what I actually want is... Yeah, those fairings. Can I get those? Ah, uh, so hard sometimes. We need to get rid of the fairings. Really? There we go. So I can inflate the heat shield. I mean, it's tough to say whether we need the heat shield at all or not, but... Probably?
Okay, and then we can jettison the heat shield and let's arm the parachutes. Um, oh, wait, we didn't have that as a way to arm them. I don't know why they don't separate either. It's weird. Arm. I, I couldn't uh, use an action group. I tried to get them on an action group, but it didn't work. Are these RCS ports armed? Yeah. They don't seem to be using the RCS fuel that I packed. Maybe I have to enable crossfeed. This gets tossed up way high. Enable. Enable. Okay, that's not... Uh, let's enable on here. There we go. Now, I'm not using comms right now, thankfully. Probably a bigger heat shield might be necessary. I don't know. I mean, we're not that that fast and high. We're not as fast and high as a Falcon stage, in fact. Because the Max, by nature, does a whole lot more work to get to orbit than even the Falcon upper stage. Whoops. Well, so far, so good. No serious heating. G-forces, though. Honestly, probably the heat shield wouldn't be necessary. But it does provide extra drag like that. So that's helpful. Ensures that we can deploy the parachute, though. Parachutes, though. I think we'll be at a very low speed. By the time the parachutes deploy. Now, of course, these engines aren't really built for reuse, but who knows. Okay, there go the parachutes. Uh, except for one. Oop, something exploded. I, I guess that was Max. Okay, there goes that one. Okay, what do we slow down to? Eh, yeah, six meters per second or so. Alright, so heat shield set. Please don't come back. Oh, it's coming back. It's coming back very slowly. Okay, landing legs. Get that thing. Oh, oh, okay. No, 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 this, this is fine. Uh, no, 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 I want to switch to that. It's fine. It's still there. It won't let me switch to it. It needs to follow the controller for some reason. It considers that debris. But we can still see it. We can still see it. Keep simulating, damn it. No, no, close. Keep simulating. Keep simulating. Okay, there we go. See? See? <laughs> Except for that wayward heat shield smacking us. Works perfectly. Alright, well, they'll have to figure out how to be able to reuse these things, but overall works perfectly. Okay, now we have to check whether the Max actually gets to orbit, considering the heavier mass of the launch system. Okay, so here we go. I just straight up reverted, so we have made no changes to the rocket. Throttle up, SAS on, ignition, and launch. Okay, ignition, and separation. Ooh, uh, it didn't take out the body flap, did it? Nope, nope, body flap is still fine. <laughs> Important. Okay. Keep an eye on the kerosene. It's using a lot of control authority though. And remember, we're controlling from a core in the external tank right now. Okay, switch. The fact that it sort of goes to zero before going into hydrogen oxygen mode might not be ideal, but anyway. Looking good on the Delta V. It's nice not actually having to reserve Delta V for the first stage. Okay, we're just hanging out at Apoapsis here. It sure looks like we have all the Delta V we need. 
We could probably carry a heavier payload, but I can't imagine fitting it inside the cargo bay. This is already filling it up quite a lot. Obviously, I had made a shuttle-style max launch previously, but I think this proton setup is much more interesting. Okay, and shut down. 240 by 230, basically. 241 by 230. Okay, separation. Mm, separation. RCSing. Nope, we'll change things. RCS on. There we go. Oh, I should have deorbited the tank, though. But that's all right. We have enough Delta V. 357 meters per second. The rest, I think, is a tug. So we wouldn't want to use that. It's not a whole lot of Delta V with this payload. But it would complete orbit and get us to a higher orbit if necessary. Well, I think I've got the... RCS on this on, maybe. E oh, one is enabled, one is disabled. Well, for now, let's just have that all disabled. Okay, let's see if it explodes popping out of the bay here. A couple. Whoa, it's out there. Does cause a little bit of a familiar sort of disaster. <laughs> anyway, uh, okay, um, can we stable? Uh, I need to activate the RCS now. Uh, extend panel. This would not be a good time to extend the panels, but on its own it's got tons of delta V, but of course it's meant to tug things around. Okay, well we've got that under control. 12.5 tons, basically. So that's a little tug. That's the tank, and Max has gotten itself together. On its own, Max has 526 meters per second. Re-entry, still uncertain with Max. But anyway, that was a test of Max with a Proton, with possible reusability of Proton? Eh, who knows. So with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.